Hi folks, my name is J.M. Rollins and I'm a transformation engineering lead here at Software AG and a specialist in the Eris product set. And today, we're doing another one of our Eris product functionality tutorials. Now, this is come, one that's come with a lot of requests and so I'm happy to present this to you today. People have been asking me, how do I create my own reports in Eris? I, I'm not a coder. Um, and so today we're not gonna be looking through the JavaScript coding interface um, of Eris because there certainly is one. Today we're gonna be using the what you see is what you get reporting interface in Eris Architect. And to do that, I'm gonna be querying against some of the things you might've seen in previous videos, which is our enterprise process map, which contains a bunch of different types of uh, value chain objects, and that drills through down to our reporting and analysis, and drills through reporting and analysis down to the process models we've seen the as is and to be versions of. Reporting to be, reporting as is, things that have come in from our previous, uh, our previous experiments, our previous videos. Now, the, the thing that I'd like to do is build a, a what you see is what you get report that kicks out some information about how this process hierarchy is laid out. And that might even include the model graphics of our lowest level models. To do that, I'm gonna go to administration, and under re evaluations, reports, I'm gonna create a new report. I'm gonna give it a new report, demo report, and I can give it a description. This is my demo. And I'll make it available in Ares Connect. That's very important to know if you want your users who, who are in Ares Connect to be able to report out on things using the reports you're building. Um, also available to users is whether or not anyone can see this. Um, you can keep this unavailable to users as you're developing it and later on make it available to users once you think it's finished and ready to go. Now I'm gonna set a context. Uh, I'm gonna make this at a model context. So I'm gonna run this on one of my value added chain models. To do that, I'll select none, type the word or letter V and select value added chain diagram as the model type I'm gonna use. Then I'm gonna choose an output I'm using a default template. Now there you can choose a blank template, but you can see the different types of uh, things that I can, I can uh, create. PDF files or Word documents, HTML file, you know, Excel files, all these sorts of things. But using the default template, I'm just gonna, by default, choose to export it out to a nice PDF file, which is very easy for me to read. And here's how it's going to print on by default. Of course, those things can be, can be fixed. You can also assign access privileges to this report. So for instance, if you wanted to restrict it to certain users or user groups, you can do that here. Now you can always modify this after the fact. This is just when we create the report for the first time. Now you're gonna see your, our what you see is what you get reporting interface. It's important to know that there are two halves to this interface. The left side, whoop, 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 called structure, and the right side, whoop, 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 called contents. Structure and contents are important to go through. The left side structure asks the question, where am I looking for information? And the right side contents asks the question, when I'm there, what information am I looking to get? So here you see for all selected models. You also three, see three areas and that's going to be consistent with all of the queries, quote unquote, that we, that we are putting in here. Uh, not the same as querying you've seen before. These are queries for reports. Um, as we drill through. Um, on the top and bottom are static areas that will occur once for each time this query is run. And in the middle is a for all, which means it'll occur every single time this query is run. Um, so for instance, in static area, I can put something that, you know, if, I, if I'm selecting 10 models, I put something here in the static area, that will only appear once. But if I put something here, it'll appear every single time a model is, uh, is found. So you can, you can choose which stuff doesn't and which stuff does repeat. Now for all selected models, I'm gonna run this on the highest level model and I'm, I wanna drill through my layers of the hierarchy. So I'm gonna right click and choose insert a query. Now a query is gonna look through the items of that selected model. So I can select any of the things from my model that I wanna search into it. Since I'm drilling through, drilling into it. Since I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna start at the very top level at my very highest level value chain, I know that what I'm gonna to wanna to find is I wanna find object occurrences um, on that model and I can filter them by type. Um, so symbols uh, allows you to filter them by like, you know, sort of a type, a type of object can have multiple different types of symbols for it. A perfect example is a, a function, might be a manual function, could be an automated function, could be a user function, could be whatever you want it to be. But this is, in this case, we're looking for the high level categorization of things, which is function. I can choose to also sort these by different things like name or X coordinate or Y coordinate. I'll do this first by, uh, by Y, so top to bottom and then left 
to right. And so now for all my selected models, you see it's gonna fill this out. I'm finding all my object occurrences filterable by type. But now I wanna see all their models underneath that. Um, so I want, to, I want to understand all the different models that are helping to support this, and I will insert one more query. So these object occurrences have a definition, which is assigned to a model. And I'm gonna find all those models, and now I'm gonna start adding some data. So I want to insert a formatting table. Um, that's gonna let me create a nice sort of grid row that I can do. It's gonna have three, uh, let's say four columns and one row over here. So what's the name of the model? Uh, what, what, what was the description of this? And when, when was it last changed? And who is the last user for that? And insert that down here as well. <clears throat> and we're gonna see what happens when I run this report? There's only three. Uh, and what uh, outputs I can get from it. So the name of the model, I'm gonna insert a data field. And that data field is gonna draw upon, well, remember left side, right side. Left side is where are we? Right side is what do I wanna know? So I'm gonna get the model name, okay? And then I want to get the, another one, a data field, in the model description. So that's an attribute, filter by type. And I'll choose description definition, which is my description attribute. And then when was it last changed? I'm going to insert that data field as well. And looking for more of those attributes based off that. So it's that last change and last user, the same sort of thing. So essentially, I'm, I'm just creating uh, the last user. Last user. Um, I'm creating a, a just a simple visualization template by which I'm going to generate these reports. So let's run this, and I'm going to choose the model to run it on my enterprise or my example process map, and it's going to download and open up this. Now, if I have data in each field, so hey, these are all of my descriptions. Here's my last change, my last user. So here's my demo report. Here are the name, description, last change, last user. Now you can do things like format your table. So you can add different coloring. You can, you can choose to add whatever you'd like underneath that. This is gonna give you an idea of what's possible right off the bat. Now, of course, we can also add things like, hey, for all the selected models, I'm actually gonna first insert uh, a graphic. So I'm gonna go for a data field. And all the models as a piece of data have their graphic. So let's do that right here, run it again. And what do you know? It's gonna kick out our example process map and then everything underneath it. And so as you can see, in a matter of minutes, I'm able to create a nice list of things. Now, we've only gone two layers deep um, on how, this, uh, how this, this report can work. And in subsequent videos, you might see more advanced reporting. Um, if you'd like that, please leave a like or a comment or a share the video around and let us know what else you'd like to see. But for now, this is basic. What you see is what you get reporting, allowing you to extract the objects and their attributes and their graphic from the database with a click of a button. You've been the listener. I've been Jay Amarlinson, Transformation Engineering Lead here at Software AG. Thank you so much. And we'll see you in the next Ares tutorial video.